Hello, I'm Draken, and this is the Draken Gameworks, and today we are going to be tackling the subject of water elevators. Now, when it comes to moving between levels, you can use ladders and you can use stairwells, but what's cooler is using water elevators to get up and down between the different levels here. And there are a couple of different ways to do it. So I'm going to show you, first of all, quickly all the different sort of methods you can use for using water elevators in your builds and then a few different style designs and also how to build one as well later on in this uh, video right okay so look at the first one over here you have a very bog standard idea of just the water coming down this is how it used to be done right at the beginning when we first started doing water elevators in minecraft you just have a flow of water coming down into a hole in the ground it only needs to be one deep just so it holds it in place um and you can just jump into the water here and then you can then just push upwards with your space bar just use the space bar to come up and it takes you up to the top level and then you can also go straight back down again by just holding the shift but you'll actually sink slowly down on your own accord anyway there's a couple of disadvantages of this and the biggest one being obviously that you can't breathe while doing it because you're underwater and also the other problem that you have as well is this is quite slow as a method of getting up and down and there are a few different designs that actually improve upon this so the next design I'll show you is what's known as sort of the staggered water elevator, where you have little blocks of water being held in place, sort of every other block going upwards, as you can see here. Uh, and you hold them in place by using signs on the back wall, although you can do it on the side as well. And then what you do is you come under the bottom one, and if you press the space bar, it moves you up a lot quicker. And again, you can also go downwards as well, just by pressing downwards on your uh, crouch key, and that takes you straight down as well. These ones are really, really handy. It's quicker than going through uh, these sort of elevators here, the uh, the one which is just a straightforward water stream. However, um, you can also breathe as well, going up and down on them as well. But it's not the fastest method, but you can build them of a variety of different sizes. Here's an example where you have a two by two version as well. And this two will work just as effective as well, coming up and then going straight back down again as well. There, there we are, see, right, okay, that works. However, these designs are the ones that tend to be able to work as just one on their own, but there is quicker methods for getting up and down between the floors. So for example, if we look at this one over here, this is literally, it's not really, you couldn't really call it an elevator. It is basically just a drop. We just fall straight down into a small pool of water. All it is is just one block of water on the ground directly beneath where we're falling. Now, some people report that when they do that uh, in that sort of method, sometimes the server lags out and it forgets to actually uh, stop you when you get to the bottom. And I've heard of people dying and uh, taking damage from their water elevators or from these water drops and everything else. So what I tend to do is I use this sort of version, which has what I call a break. It's basically the first step of like what you have in these staggered elevators, just put directly above there with a sign there holding it into place. And it just gives you a little bit of a slowdown just before you hit the pool at the bottom there and acts as basically like a fail safe in those circumstances. I've been using this on a server that I play on quite regularly and I've never had any problems by having a break in there as well just above there and you just need the one and then you can just drop down and it's a lot quicker getting downwards of course since the aquatic update you also have soul sand is available now soul sand when placed in a uh, below a load of uh, source blocks source water blocks will create this bubble stream going upwards and this one is i think it's the one that everyone has sort of taken to and fallen in love with using uh, more recently and if you jump into here as you can see you can just literally step into it and it pushes you up at an incredibly fast speed and the other great thing is that these bubbles enable you to breathe as well the entire time you're in the stream so you can go straight up and rush straight into there the only problem with this one is the reverse of the problem that you might have with the drop here. So obviously with the drop, you can't go up it. And with this one, you can't go back down it. Try as you might, you can be holding down crouch as much as you like on there. You are just not gonna get back down the stream. So with these two types here, you definitely need to be using two different elevators if you to use them, but they are quicker than the previous versions. There is also a way of doing it using a magma block in the bottom. It is set up in a very similar way to the way we set up the soul sand elevators, except for you put the magma blocks at the bottom. And that's basically the reverse of the soul sand version. So now when we stand on the top, we don't even need to do anything. It will just pull us straight down onto the top of the magma block and then we can walk straight out. The only problem with the magma block version is that it um, damages you when you get down there. So you either have to wear some sort of enchanted boots that's resistant to fire or um, you just have to get out very, very quickly at the bottom there. Personally, I prefer these two. Uh, I prefer to use one with a break here as a drop with a break and then use the soul sand and I'll use two separate ones rather than the uh, the one which is done as one over there like the uh, the staggered stair one. 
course, all of those are well and good, but what if you want to hit across multiple levels? If you don't just need an elevator that takes you to um, just the one level, but you need to actually have multiple floors that you can reach by the same elevator. How could we do that? How can we set that up? Well, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. Um, and without redstone, we've got these couple of ideas down here, which I'll show you. So first of all, we go back to the idea of a staggered elevator. Now with the staggered elevator, it is actually the staggered water elevator. It's just really easy. All we need to do is just create a stop off out here where we just have an extra space in here that we can actually come out to the floor itself. We can then walk straight onto the water and then hold up the uh, space bar again and that will push us right to the top as well. And we can do it on the same going down so we can go all the way down, stop where the floor we need. Sometimes you've got to kind of get it to work properly and you've got a bit of a bounce between but you can get out on the floor there and then you can go straight down and of course if you wanted to you could go all the way straight up ignoring the floor that you're on but you do need to so often it stops there and you have to push it up there it's a little bit awkward but it does work it does work and then downwards is usually a lot quicker because it will tend to work but it's a bit easier going straight down Next idea is then to use, maybe we should be using um, some form of uh, soul sand in there again, like we did before. The only problem is that you can't stop off easily at other floors. So the way that I would do it, so we have this, which brings you up to the first floor, but we then have a second one directly behind us at the next floor, so we can just push back and go up to the next floor, or we could have just gone straight down onto the floor below. And we do the same with the magma as well. So it goes backwards as you come down, so you got to this, so we could walk out here onto the, the middle floor, or we can be, go all the way straight down and then push out. And the great things with this is like, for example, with this soul sand one, if we just push against the fire wall there, we can go straight to the top in without and then just let go at the floor that we want. Of course, if you are um, not needing to actually stop at the floors in the way, you just want something that's going to take you straight up to the very top. One other option you have, because the problem with the ones we got uh, just seen there is that they have, um, they're going to be slightly staggered. So each level is going to be one step back from the, uh, the one in front of it. This version here will go all the way to the top, no matter which level you come from. But you, the problem is you can't stop off in the middle floors. So this, we hit the top floor, we get taken straight to the top floor from the bottom. And this one will take us straight down to the bottom as well. But we can't stop in the middle floors on either of those. But if we are on the middle floors, if I can get myself to get up there, second, there we are. We come into here. We can still join the stream there at the middle floor and take ourselves up to the top. And likewise, if we were going down as well, we could go into the the middle floor here and just drop straight down the hole and also drop down so if you're not needing to actually stop at the floors in between but you just wanted something that from your middle floors you were able to go to straight to the top or straight to the bottom those might be an option instead okay so what i want to just demonstrate to you here in a second is just how we can quickly build um two of those types of elevators the techniques are pretty much similar regardless of which type of version that you go for so if we start with one here what you'd normally do is obviously put in your floor at the bottom here i'm just going to use some quartz here just because it's easier to share obviously quartz quite uh quite a valuable material in Minecraft. So you might want to make it out of any other sort of solid block that you could come across here. And you start off with that. And I'm going to do it um, not in the creative sort of way, but by actually using something to sort of jump up on, just like you would do in creative, just to show it's easy enough to build in creative. And then to begin with, at the bottom, we need to create a bit of a this sort of upside down horseshoe shape facing us, leaving the front open for the first two layers up above there. Then as we come up, we can just jump up a little bit. And on these layers, we just do all the way around the outside, but we also want one just straight above what's gonna be the door there. And then we just basically copy this design all the way up to the top until you get to the level where you're needing to actually either build your floor out from there. Uh, and we can use like dirt or something like this just to actually uh, wrap up the side there and get up the side of the actual glass bit there and we could just put that into there oh maybe if we put it in the right place there we go, that helps and there we go we have basically it's a basic tube but that's all it is it is very very simple that is the basic design of it and with the staggered water elevators is show you off first of all we can actually leave a quartz block in the bottom there and then we need just a sign and it doesn't just have to be a sign we can use hatches as well and you can also do this with open fence gates as well they also work well in fact any block that will block water but still enables you to pass it works perfectly fine in this sort of function but in this case we'll just use signs that tends to be the standard and we just put a sign up against the back wall here at this height that will enable us to put a bucket of water straight above it there and that creates that now if we were doing uh, the downwards drop elevators that we saw over there all you would need to do is put a bucket of water in this square as well at the bottom and there yeah you you're done you are pretty much done but if we were building the staggered elevator where we was going up what we would do and you could do this in survival show you how easy it is we can push up on that one 
build a sign on the next level then just sink down a little bit and put in the next bucket of water above that sign push up so we move through that next level and we just keep doing this until we get to the top it is very easy to do there we go in survival very very easy in survival now we're at the top there and that's a very small but very easy to make staggered water elevator that will get us up and down without any problems of course if we want to go and do a soul sand one and i've already built it in the actual tube already here so we're going back to the basics there we obviously need to fill this up with water and the only way we can fill this up with water normally would be with just using the water buckets and doing source buckets all the way up but there is another way so if we put some signs at the front here so you need to put the signs here on the side of the door because this area is going to contain water and we need to hold the water back from flowing out of the door so if we put the signs here that will stop the water coming out once we put it into place but i'll show you you a nice easy way if you can get to the top of the water elevator that you can actually turn all of the water into source blocks and what we do is before we put the soul sand in have a bit of dirt down the bottom there or sand or something instead of the soul sand and put one source bucket of water at the top now what will happen as we go down is it will look like it's been done and there you are we've got water a full column coming down here however if we put soul sand in the bottom here let's i'll just show you now Nothing happens, no bubbles, nothing at all. We go in here and we just stay downwards, nothing happens at all. And that's because soul sand for it to work with a bubble elevator needs every block above it to be a water source block. And at the moment it's not. The only water source block we got in there is at the top. Now you could go down the whole length of it with um, buckets of water and put in the source blocks as I said earlier. But another quicker way of doing it is if you get yourself a bunch of kelp leaves and just push up and just place kelp leaves coming up now you can either manually place it or wait for the kelp to grow just place one on the bottom but we come all the way up the top there oh hopefully not jumping up into creative mode because i was pressing spacebar too many times and now we're at the top here you've got kelp all this kelp will automatically turn that flowing water into source blocks which is exactly what we want and then all we need to do is break the bottom one now that will cause all the water all the kelp leaves to break and then we just take out the dirt at the bottom there and we put a soul sand in there and now you should start seeing the bubbles coming all up there and we have our bubble elevator now completely constructed that will take us all the way straight up. Now that I've shown you the different types of water elevator that there might be, I also want to just show you some different ideas for design styles that you could do with these sort of water elevators and different elements. So this first one here, I was going to show off here, one of the important things with water is that you have all four sides blocked off somehow, whether it's with a sign that's just holding it back or with solid blocks or anything else. But one of the things you can use is a fence post that as long as it's not waterlogged, will hold it back. And one of the great things with fence posts is that if you put them diagonally like this, you can still move move past them from the diagonal direction and this enables us to create a lift like so so instead of approaching it from the front like we did with some of the other bubble elevators that we had there you can approach this one just by placing four fence posts around where you're putting the water and you can come straight up here as it does sometimes you need to sort of adjust yourself slightly as you get towards the top because you can sometimes bang your head on the top there but it should work functionally well there we are see straight up Okay, another idea here as well is if you've got the staggered water elevator. Now, you've seen the way we've done it before was we use signs beneath each level. But look at this one. There's no signs whatsoever. And in fact, actually, we have a back wall that is all perfectly of the same style and design going up as well. How is that working then, you might ask? Well, basically, it's with the hatches on the back wall. Remember that hatches, I've just actually just broken that one. I didn't want to do that. So let's put that one back. There we are. Right, okay, so we need a spruce trap door. But I will show you now. Obviously, now that we got the trap door off uh, we will put that back in place you can see that it was holding the water back we put it back in there there we are it stops the water close it and that creates that back bit now patches will block water from that above it but you can also make the where the uh, hatches are an actual water source block as well so you get this effect where it just looks like there's nothing holding these water blocks up at all but you can still use it as a perfectly functional um, elevator there Okay, so this next one I admit that I've nicked from uh, Zaisuma's uh, streams there, one of the hermits there. Um, I've been watching some of his videos recently. Definitely go and check out his channel. But he has this idea that he created using acacia hatches as for ways of moving items around in one of his builds. And I thought it was actually such a fantastic idea. You could use this as well as a normal water elevator. It looks like a very sort of industrial thing to sort of set up if you're building an industrial style build. It's almost like pipeline you've got here. And so the acacia hatches are all assembled around the 
outside of the water stream and will hold the water in place quite happily in there. And then at the bottom here, what I've done is I've actually put an acacia door instead of a hatch. So we actually have a doorway because doors will also hold back water. And we have a, like a doorway going into our elevator that will bring us straight up there. And it works perfectly fine, works really well. I really like this sort of look and design on this one here. Next one we've got over here, we are actually holding the water back here. We can access this from all four sides. Like literally we can come up any of the sides and come in here. And what's actually holding the water back in this occasion is these fence gates. So these fence gates are currently open, but we've just done fence gates all the way up. And what I've done is I also put posts all on each of the corners as well. So it creates this sort of look. I think it looks quite nice like this actually. And this could be really good for like a medieval build or something like that, you're using water elevators on, but yeah. It's all made out of wood, it looks quite nice, and I, I like the design on this one here as well. So we can approach this one from all four sides. But yeah, fence gates work just as well, and you can actually open and close them as well if you wanted to. So if we wanted to, we could actually just close these ones off, for example, and you just leave these two open at the bottom, and it would still function just as well, and we can come down here. But uh, yeah, they're pretty cool there. Moving on slightly to the next one here, and it's almost like all the posts have disappeared. We've almost got like these droplets coming down the side here. Now this is actually very similar to what we did back at the beginning here with the fence posts, but instead of using fence posts, what we're using is glass panes. When glass panes are placed down and not attached to anything, they will form these like very thin cylinder type um, objects here. And you can place them on top of each other to create basically four pillars around the outside here. And again, it works in just the same way. We come in from the side and yeah, it works just as functionally as the first one does. So how about this one? Now this is a bit more bizarre. It seems to not be supported on two sides. We have one for a corner. So we can walk straight in the corner here and straight up. It's a really nice little design. I love this design here. Uh, great for like if you've got a game, like a sort of fantasy build and you want to put a water elevator in the corner, or if you like had a sort of a more modern sort of wooden style build design as well, it could work in there. And what we're actually doing here is it's supported on the back, obviously by the trunks there going up or whatever we do is the back wall. But the side bits here, we have hatches that are in the closed state. Again, the water is not flowing into these. These aren't waterlogged hatches, so they will hold the water back in place. And so we have a complete one open side here, like half of it is almost open on this side that we can actually get into the water stream really easily. The next one takes that one step further. We can now approach this from both sides. I, I like this with the uh, the birch wood there. It does look like it's uh, sort of something, I don't know, maybe it would work with like an oriental style build, I think. But yeah, we can now approach from both sides. And all we've done is we've just doubled up on the hatches, got rid of any sort of blocks around the outside, and the hatches are holding in all sides. So these two are holding in these front two sides, and the ones around the back are holding the back two sides there. And yeah, it's almost like it's being held up, barely held up by these hatches on the side here. This next one is just a quick demonstration that you can actually use a combination of different techniques for holding your water at bay. Like for example, this iron here, this iron post will hold water back just like fence posts as well. And you can combine that in with like your solid blocks as well. You could have a hatch here, like the water here at the bottom is being held back one by a hatch at the bottom here that's on the floor. And then at the top here, we're holding it back by a fence gate. So you can mix and match it as you wanted to, if you wanted a bit more, to make a bit more variety in your list going up. One thing I will make note of, you see these lovely ender rods here, these end rods here look nice but they can't be used directly next to the water stream um, they can be put on the diagonal like this but you can't use these for holding back the water itself because the water will just wash them away so you can't use them in that angle but you can put them on the corners to sort of create a bit of a lighting effect like we've done here Okay, the next one here is pretty similar to the one we saw with the one in the corner, but we've done the same sort of thing, except for it's against a flat wall. Now, this one appears again like we're missing something, like we're missing one side supporting. So we can see that this hatch on this side that's against the wall is supporting it on the left side and on the right side, the same with those hatches, and the back is supported by some trunks. But what about the front? Well, the front has a four, small, small pillar of glass and this is actually the dark blue glass so it really blends in really nicely against that water stream there you can barely notice it against there when you're looking at the front woods now you wouldn't be able to walk directly into it but you can pretty much walk into it from any other direction there and come straight up there it's a pretty nice little thing and that could work well if you didn't want to put it into a corner like we did with the one over there one of the other things, and I love this idea, I, I, when I came up with this idea, I suddenly realized that, you, you know, you could all support your water streams. You could always use other source blocks. So what about this for an idea? We have an aquarium. We build an aquarium that you can walk into the aquarium because of these fence gates that are situated here, holding the water back at the doorway. And right at the front is your water elevator. 
but actually this is an open aquarium so we could actually very feasibly push through there and go into our water aquarium here and then swim back up here it creates a, quite a nice feature a different way of getting between floors by having a bubble elevator inside the aquarium that we enter through this gap here i think it's a really cool idea just one word of warning though one word of caution don't do what i did which was i tried putting fish in there um and it doesn't work because what happens is the fish swim into the bubble stream and then get pushed out the top and end up outside the aquarium so you don't want to kill all your fish off so don't put any fish in there unless you get a way of blocking them from actually reaching into the part where you've built the bubble elevator there Okay, and for the final one, I wanted to demonstrate this idea. Forgive my pretty poor build there in the front of the building, but the idea is using a little bit of redstone, we can make an elevator where we can select which floor we come off at through the bubble elevator. So at the moment we've got a switch here that is switching between the very top floor, the very top of this build, and the middle floor as well. Currently it's in top floor, top floor mode, so if we step into the elevator, it will take us straight the way up to the top. And if we come back down again and we hit it to middle floor, then we can go into the elevator and suddenly, boom, we don't actually go all the way up to the top. We stop at the middle floor. And what happens here is we've got a piston off the side here and it's pushing a block straight into the middle of the water there and blocks it off and stops us from going up to the top floor and enables us to come out of the middle floor. But if you might be aware, if we move that block back, what that block has now done is destroyed the source block it was in front of. Now that's going to cause a problem. So if we wanted to go back up to the top floor, what would happen would normally that block would pull back and where the water is there, you wouldn't have a source block anymore. So the whole thing is incomplete. But look at this, we've gone straight up. We've gone straight through by moving it back to the top floor. And the reason for that is if we go back to the middle floor, I will show you. We have in here, just hold into the corner, you can just about make it out there. There is a dispenser there holding water buckets so that as soon as the piston pulls back, we've got a water bucket there that suddenly is pushed out here, replaces the source block here and recompletes the column going up to the top floor. I'll show you around the back. This is very, very simple redstone mechanism we've done here. I'm sure if you wanted to do something a bit more complex, many of you would be clever enough to be able to come up with some more clever redstone circuits going up there. But we have a simple circuit coming up here to power this piston on the left that blocks it off when we want to go to the middle floor. And then when it unpowers, we have a circuit coming off here, the signal coming off this redstone torch that leads around to this dispenser that is filled with water buckets that will then pump it into the, where the space that the pistons just pulled back from and recompletes the circuit, enabling the lift to go all the way to the top. The only problem with this is you lose a water bucket each time. So you might need to have like a couple of chests feeding into there if you wanted to do this as a part of a regular build and have lots of water buckets in there that you'd have to top up every now and then. So that might be a little bit frustrating, but maybe some other of you guys have got some other ideas ideas about how we could get around that with the redstone and everything there. And there we have it. We have a couple of examples of how you can build water elevators in Minecraft and along with a couple of nice examples there of how you can implement these water elevators into your styles and designs and build. It'd be really intriguing to see what some of you guys come up with your designs for water, water elevators there. So feel free to tag us on Twitch with any of your designs that you've done after you've found this all helpful and don't forget if you have found this helpful to drop us a like on this video and to subscribe to the channel leave us a comment all very much appreciated and for now take care all